All right, today we're gonna to be talking about this old camera, a Leica 3A. This thing is pretty crazy. It's super quirky. Um, I was so excited to get my hands on one and uh, kind of go through it and shoot with it. So that's what we're gonna to do today. Gonna to go over a little bit of the history, gonna go over how to load it, use it, and shoot it. And then some of the weird quirks about this because it is a very unique process and workflow. So these cameras were really popular. It was the first successful mainstream uh, compact 35 millimeter camera that, um, that came out and that was super successful. During this time, they started um, introducing faster shutter speeds. So this has the 1,000th of a second. Uh, at this time, Nikon already had one that went like 12 50th of a second. So they were doing a little catch up. But I looked up the original ads for this and they have a picture of a cat slapping a dog. And it says, um, oh, okay, I have it right here. Even your eye couldn't stop that lightning jab, but the Leica stopped it cold. <laughs> so these cameras, uh, they were advertised as being for the sportsman, right? And if so, if you wanted to shoot cats punching dogs, <laughs> this one is going to do it. I love that. And I think it's so funny too, because they talk about how fast it shot and how I could capture that quick shot, but everybody knows that these cameras are slow to use. We'll go over that and you'll see why. So with the Leica 3A, the way you can identify that is the first generation had no viewfinder or rangefinder up top, so it's pretty easy to see. The second generation also didn't have that and they had a little patch where this dial is going to go. And then this is the third generation, which is that where they introduced the 1,000th of a second. So you can also identify because of the distance in the rangefinder and viewfinder. And then the later models, they'll join these so it's a little easier to use. All right, so let's just jump into it. Let's just throw some film in there and get it set up. And along the way, you're gonna see how, how different this process is. So first off, to load the film, you're gonna wanna open up the bottom door. We'll slide this over, little hinge there. So we'll just go off to the side. Okay. So there's a couple things that you're going to have to do before you start, you start shooting. Um, you can see I've already got a roll of film in there. When I got this camera, there was an exposed roll. I'll have a video to that link. I developed it, processed it. There were images on there. I think from the 1950s or 60s, probably 60s. So to load the film, you can see that there's a spool over here. So we'll take that out as well. Okay. So before you start, you're gonna see that there are some instructions on this. Now you actually have to cut the film specifically to that shape and that length. Um, you can try to be as exact as you want to, but I'm just gonna kinda go for it, right? So what you're gonna wanna do is, you can see it's gonna load this way. You'll stretch across and we'll connect to this. So inside of this spool, there's a little metal tab. That's what we'll connect to. But first, let's prep the film. So you can see here, 10 centimeters wide, around four inches. So we're gonna need something like that, right? So what I'm gonna do is cut the film down. And you'll wanna make sure that when you do this, when you get to the end here, make sure you do a nice curved line. If you have any sharp corners, that's gonna create an opportunity to snag and tear. And you can actually see I did it, didn't do a very good job there. So that part right there can totally become that, right? So I want to avoid that. Let's try that again. Also to avoid any snags, you want to cut right in between the grooves. Oh, see, and I didn't do it there either. I want to avoid any sharp edges. So something more like that. So this is actually probably a little bit long, so I'll cut that down just slightly. All right, so once you've got your film cut, did it to about four inches, you'll wanna go ahead and attach the film to the spool, and there's a little metal notch in there that you're gonna connect it to. And as you do this, make sure and keep, oh, see? Keep both of these up top. Okay, so this is not particularly easy to do, but I'm just going to make sure it goes all the way to the edge there. Okay, 
So I'm gonna load this up and I'm gonna be honest, this is like the fourth time I've tried this. It keeps getting stuck, jammed, I keep getting tears. So here we go. I think I've got it this time. Nope, I don't, see? Yeah, put those up top. We're gonna slide this in here. The film is gonna wrap around this edge here. And you have to be so careful because as soon as it gets snagged, the film gets rough edges and it does not want to work anymore. Okay, so that is feeling good. Let's give this a shot. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right. See, it's, it takes a lot of effort for this. All right. Now to see if the film attached, let's go ahead and wind it. All right, things are spinning. Awesome. Yeah, this is perfect. See, this is so cool about this camera. When you spin, when you advance the film, all of these dials spin with it, which it's just, it makes it look like gears in a clock. And that's the thing about these cameras. They were made in a microscope, in a factory that makes microscope and like fine-tuned instruments. So this has that feel for sure. All right, let's see if the shutter goes off. Perfect, and then you saw that spin, right? Okay, great. So we would want to advance it again just to make sure that we have a fresh frame. Oh, it's so cool to see that spin and just listen to that sound. I'm gonna put it up to the mic. Right, I just haven't heard a shutter like that. That's that like um, the fabric um, curtain going across. It's all those gears moving. Okay, so now that we've got a fresh frame, now you can start thinking about taking a photo. Oh, I almost forgot, that's the one thing. You have to set the film counter manually. So in order to do that, there's these little notches and you spin it counterclockwise. All right, we'll counterclockwise, set it to zero. Okay, so now that we've got the film in, the counter is set to zero we can start thinking about shooting. So now this is where everything in this camera seems so unusual. The first thing you want to do before you can take a shot is you first have to wind the film. You can't set your shutter speed first. You can spin this dial, but even if you do, it was just at 1 60th, it'll just go back to where it started. See, went right back to 1 60th. But now that I've advanced the film, now you can change your shutter speed. So you've got everything from one, uh, one thousandth of a second. And if you want to go to your sh slower shutter speeds, you go to this one twentieth of a second and you can use that. Or the one now means that you can use the slow shutter dial in the front. You've got one twentieth of a second all the way down to two seconds, one second, and then T or bulb. All right, so let's say we were planning on taking a, a picture of a cat punching a dog. So let's set it at one thousandth of a second. We'll make it quick. Okay, perfect. So from there, I mean, from there it's pretty straightforward. You would have your focus dial in the front here. Um, one thing I don't like about these screw mount lenses is that sometimes when I'm focusing, I'll reach the edge and then I'll actually start unscrewing the lens. So I had to watch out for that. Then from here, you can go ahead and set your aperture. But that's one thing about these, is these dials and switches are so fine. Like, with I don't know how you would do it wearing gloves. The fine print makes it really hard to see, so you really have to slow down and make sure that you're setting everything where it needs to. Now, as far as the focus goes, that brings us to this weird thing here. So the one on the left is the viewfinder. That's where your focus. It has a split prism, so you'll have like the dual images that you'll line up to get your focus. You can switch this over for the infinity if you were just shooting landscapes and you just wanted to make sure that that's what you're focusing on. Then you would switch over to your range finder and there you can frame the shot. So again, all of these steps is really what goes into making this such a, a much slower work, workflow. But there is beauty in that because you will take time in everything that you're doing, put effort and um, intention into all the settings and the shot. So 
with that, it is kind of a beautiful thing. Okay, so that's one issue with these cameras and their age is that the slow shutter settings, they tend to get stuck over time. And that's what this camera suffers from. I just noticed that even if I have it set to T and I'm not using it, it will still affect uh, the curtain. It won't, the curtain won't move. But if I keep it at a faster setting, then I can take a shot. Uh, later when I do out, go out and um, shoot with this, there's a lot of shots I can't show you because I didn't know that then. Okay, so when you're done shooting, pretty straightforward, you'll just flip this over to the uh, rewind, pull this dial up, and then just follow the arrow to advance your film back into the canister. Okay, so now that we've gone over that, the only thing left is to take her out and see how she shoots. This camera was made in Wetzlar, Germany fine instrument factory made it, so you'd know no expense was spared. And with that being said, I looked up the original cost of this camera, and it was 132. Now with the inflation, that puts it just shy of $3,000. So this, even back then, was a very expensive camera. And think about that, $3,000 in 1935, this is the Great Depression. So people were down and out. So this camera was only for the wealthy. I looked up the user manual for this. Back in the day, it cost $4. That's almost $90 today. Oh, but get this, you could buy a rapid winder. It cost you like, today's dollar, like $330, but you could rapid wind. But hey, they did offer a 12-month payment plan. One piece of advice that I heard with these cameras that's really valuable is to always keep your lens cap on whenever you're not shooting, because that sun, that's going into straight into open aperture, and it can start to fry that back curtain. So always keep this covered, or keep it in a bag. So walking around with this mini camera, I mean, obviously not very many to today's standards, but for a camera back then, this really was compact. Um, I didn't actually think I'd get noticed as much as I have walking around with this. I think people can just tell that it's old. Uh, they don't know exactly what it is, but they know you're shooting with something. All right, back inside with the Leica. This camera is amazing to shoot with. Yeah, slowing your process down, having that much more intention in every photo that you take is such a beautiful thing. But I find this camera to be full of contradictions. It's, it was the lightweight version, you know? Uh, this thing feels like a brick. You know, you feel that weight when you're out shooting. Um, it was known as the camera for the sportsman, get that quick shot, but it is the slowest workflow that I've experienced with a camera. So I don't know how I'm gonna catch that shot because there's so much to think about and do. Even the focusing is, it's something that you would get used to over time, I'm sure, but really interesting. And not only that, it's, it's, it takes such beautiful photos and you want to shoot with it, but at the same time, this is so such a relic, it's so expensive, um, that I don't want to take it out. These models are known for having uh, issues with the slow shutter speeds after all this age, and that's another issue. It doesn't want the cold weather either, so taking this camera out, it is kind of taking out your grandma where you just want to make sure they're safe, that they don't trip and fall, um, but at the same time, beautiful camera, beautiful craftsmanship. It's amazing to feel, and it has all the right aesthetics when you're going out that even the sound of the shutter, I love it. There's really nothing else like it. So yeah, thanks so much. This was an amazing opportunity. I was looking so uh, forward to doing this video on the Leica. Um, yeah, check out the, the film that was in that Leica on the, this video here. But, but yeah, thanks so much. Like and subscribe, and um, I'll see you in the next one.